what's up? This is a Coast Gear Fun Day. Back at it again, kicking it for you and for yours. You know what I'm saying? And um, got to give a shout out to my ancestors. Much love to them. And I give a shout out to y'all for watching and, you know, doing you know doing what it do. You know what I mean? Much love as we go through this journey of learning about African history. Feel me? Then this was from the Christian Science Monitor. You know what I mean? George Washington's African-American descendants recognized after 200 years. Hmm. The president's adopted son, who went by Wash, lightly fathered children with slaves. Now historians are granting his living descendants the proper recognition. This is written September 18, 2016 by Amanda Hoover. All right. Rumors that have surrounded George Washington family tree for more than 200 years have been confirmed. Since some of the nation's earliest days, the founding fathers and the first U.S. president family tree has had biracial members. The National Park Service and a nonprofit that runs Washington's Mount Vernon Estate have added exhibits to the estate that recognize the descendants of Washington's step grandson, who was born outside official family line lineage. While no DNA evidence has been used to back up the claims, historians say the rumor has long lived in the shadow of classic perceptions of the first family, and now they have evidence that's sufficient to make the call. The move included these offspring in a historical narrative of the nation's first family marked to push an undercover and celebrate African American heritage, exploring an often overlooked aspect of early American history. There is no more pushing this history to the side. Matthew Pernard, the National Park Service Rangers, and Program Manager at the Arlington House. The former house of Robert E. Lee told the Associate Press. While George and Martha Washington had no biological children of their own, the first president did adopt Martha's grandchildren. Washington Wash Park Curtis and Eleanor Nellie Park Curtis Lewis both raised on Washington's Mount Vernon estate. Park Curtis married Mary Fittenhoo in 1804, five years after Washington's death. Together they had one daughter, Mary Ann Rudolph Curtis, who survived to adulthood, and Mary General Lee, her third cousin. What historians are now recognizing, however, is that Park Curtis also fathered children with Ariana Carter, and Carrie Lamb Birmingham, two of Washington slaves. Scientific proof would have to come from a DNA test comparing Carter and Birmingham living descendants with those of Lee, the only official bloodline of Park Curtis. Whether or not Lee relatives would consent to such a testing isn't clear. While the historic revelation so light sheds light on a once concealed portion of African American history, it is not the first insight to the life as a slave at Mount Vernon. Just as American perception of African American history has shifted, Washington's own feelings of slavery altered during his lifetime, leading with conflicting feelings about the institution. At age 11, Washington inherited over 10 slaves and 280 acres of land. Over the next few decades, he would purchase additional 100 additional slaves. As a strict plantation manager, driven by efficiency, Washington sometimes deemed her, deemed a her slave owner in the beginning of his career, with his neighbor Richard Partington noting, it was a sense of all his Washington neighbors that he treated his slaves with more severity than any other man. But others later wrote that Washington treated his slaves with more humanity than any other owners did, and later began to sympathize with those living on his plantation. Hmm. The unfortunate condition of the person whose labor and part I employ has been the only unavoidable subject of regret, he wrote later in life. To make adults among them as easy as comfortable in their circumstances as their actual state of ignorance and improvidence would admit. To lay a foundation to prepare the rising generation for a destiny different from that in which they were born or for some satisfaction to my, to my mind, and could not hope to be displeasing to the justice of the Creator. During the Revolutionary War, 
Washington began to internalize the ideas of liberty and equality he fought for as a general and wanted to extend those in the same manner to the slaves he owned. Over time, those feelings grew near to resentment of his own role as a slave owner. In, the 19, in 1790, after vying not to purchase or sell any more slaves, Washington began an experiment. He would seek English or Scottish farmers to rent out fire space on his plantation, hoping the tenants might hire slaves as laborers rather than bringing their own workers from Europe. While his plan was unsuccessful, Washington did make provisions in his will to set more than 100 slaves free following Martha's death. Nearly 200 remained on Mount Vernon under the ownership of Park Curtis and his sister. By recognizing more of Washington's ancestors and their history, historians hope to dismantle the antiquated views on the family and race relations at the plantation, creating more of an accurate and an, exhibit, and an inclusive exhibit. My aunt told me that if the truth of our family was known, it would topple the first family of Virginia, Zuni Miller Mata, Edison of Parker Curtis, and Brahman, told the Associate Press. We are all so much part of each other, it makes no more sense to have it be a house divided. And there you have it. It talks about George Washington and, you know, the things he was doing and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And... George Washington, you know what I'm saying? They don't preach about how they don't talk about how George Washington died. Many people don't talk about that. You know, yes, they say he died from pneumonia and he bled out how they was doing the surgical, but the white man's surgical procedures of the day was. But the real truth was George Washington caught pneumonia for going down his slave road and raping a young black girl. That's how he caught pneumonia. Because he let a young, fresh and green, you know what I'm saying? Now, the, also, too, the stuff about George Washington not having a biological child, I heard, is pretty much nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Um, Carter G. Woodson, in one of his books, confirmed this. He writes about this, about how George Washington had a son, a, a, a biological, a black grandson, excuse me, a black son, one of his slaves and whatnot. So, all this stuff is coming about, you know what I'm saying? It's taking a, it's taking a slow, sweet time, but it's coming about. But as he said before, he was a harsh, cold taskmaster. He, he treated black people with no love. Like, he, this thing you heard about his teeth, the story about how, you know, his teeth was pulled from other slaves' mouths. That's the stuff he wanted. That's the stuff he got for his teeth. You know what I'm saying? So you had to be pretty old for that to happen. You had to be pretty old for that to happen. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, this is a Coast Gear Fun Day. So anyway, this is Coast Gear Fun Day kicking in for you and for yours. Much love, you know what I'm saying? Subscribe. Hey, donate to the movement, man. We ever doing it real big like this. Peace.